Today, I think we have a special treat, understanding Navratras to honor the goddess within, with Anu Kalra, who's a spiritually inspired author, an artist, and a guide. For those of you who do not know me, I am Sukirti Gupta. I'm one of the co-founders of Sipping Thoughts. Sipping Thoughts is a multi-platform media company that was co-founded by me and by Meeta Gudgutia. It was set up keeping in mind the tagline, real women, real thoughts. We wanted to create a no judgment platform and a network of women for women. Sipping Thoughts reaches about 2.5 million women on a monthly basis through all of our social media platforms. You can check us out on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, and of course our website. Please do visit us and you'll find lots of amazing content there. But today the session is all about Anu. And let me give a little bit of background about her. She actually started her career in brand management and advertising for over 25 years. But now Anu spends the majority of her time either pursuing her own spiritual quest or in supporting people's effort at enhancing their well-being. She interprets traditional wisdom in the modern context through her writings, her paintings, her talks, and sharing through workshops and personal counseling sessions. Anu, as a lot of you will know, is a published author and has also done a lot of solo art exhibitions to her name, a multitude of TV appearances, and she's been featured in national and international publications, received many, many awards. She is also a visiting master at Ananda in the Himalayas and is a coach and a mentor to many. She has created, and I might say this wrong, Avir Bhav, a self-help system of guidance and meditation cards based on her paintings of Indian gods and goddesses and written a book of interpretation for the same. In this session, we will be exploring the various facets of the Navratras with particular attention to food. She, Anu will be interpreting traditional wisdom in the modern context. She'll be sharing a lot of stories from ancient scriptures to better understand the divine feminine and gender roles. And she will help us with tips to adapting and understanding to create one's own unique way of celebrating the same. So as we all know, Navratras are coming upon us. So it's a very, very apt time to have Anu with us. So Anu, first of all, welcome to Sipping Thoughts. We're so excited to have you here. Thank you. I'm excited as well. So my first question, I think and that comes to a lot of people's mind. So your journey from a communications expert to a spiritual path, how did that transition happen? Yeah, so I don't think it's really a transition. It's just that this part of me got started getting expressed more and more as I discussed. I've always been... A kind, the kind of person who has shared very happily whatever my journey has been. And when my spiritual journey started happening consciously, I think on an unconscious level, we are all going through it in any case all the time. But when it started happening more consciously and um, I was going through a few challenges in my life and I discovered that going inwards and tackling the issues was helping me more than any outside help and assistance that could really support me. So I felt this desire to share, you know, it's like if somebody gives up smoking, they want to share with everybody how they gave up smoking because they know how much better they feel and how, you know, you can breathe so much easier now and you have so much more stamina. So it's just, it's that you feel the drive from within, you know, you feel that compassion. Let me tell this person, maybe this person can feel better just the way I felt better. So in my case, um, from being a very, very overworked uh, woman balancing home and family to getting into the space of single parenthood and health issues and financial issues and emotional issues. The thing that helped me most is going inwards and finding the spiritual understanding and understanding some things from the scriptures and stuff. And which started, I started feeling more centered, more balanced, more equanimous. And therefore, the natural instinct was to share that with people. And that transformed into something that started giving me the greatest joy. This Thank you. That's so nice. So one other thing that you talk about and that you're an LSR girl, you love to share, but that you're also a feminist at heart. So how does the feminist in you blend with the spiritual part of you? Perfectly well. Perfectly well. Because... The, especially the way Sanatan Dharam looks at life, 
the feminine energy is given its due it's about balance it is not about any one being superior it is about the harmony and balance between the masculine and the feminine forces of life that is how this world the manifested world continues to exist because the two forces have to be in harmony if they are not in harmony there is always this urge to find a new balance find a new balance so therefore it works perfectly well because the entire way sanatan dharma understands is that it says there is shiva and there is shakti and you know this is beautiful um all the mantras for the feminine the shaktis are in cream shreem we'll discuss some of that as we discuss further today which is all with this e ki matra right and if you remove e ki matra from shiva shiva becomes shava so even shiva cannot be shiva without the feminine force so how can being a feminist what is being a feminist being a feminist is recognizing that there is a role for women in the world and they have a right to everything that is in god's world it is not about this is her place any place she wants to inhabit can be her place provided she knows how to go about it provided she has the abilities to manifest what she needs to and she has to be supported in that that is the way uh, manifestation survives so therefore there is nothing anti spiritual about being feminist if anything it is a most spiritual thing to do it is not just about women it is about the about honoring the femininity within each and every person including within men you know i was reading that the suicide deaths for men are much greater than for women it is also possible because men when they attempt suicide use more lethal means and women survive even if they make suicide attempts they probably don't succeed it at thank god for that but the point is that it isn't as if men who do not embrace their femininity have it any easier so the point we need to think of it is not as individuals but we need to think about these forces working within us and therefore the femininity and the feminine energy and the feminine attributes have to be given their due in everybody's life so beautifully said so beautifully said and so inspirational and my last question before we get into the session what is it that you would like us to take away from the talk today awesome um i would like each one to understand themselves a little better and therefore know which direction they would now like to move into somebody might resonate with a story that i share somebody might resonate with a mantra that i share somebody might resonate uh, with us understanding of what i share the important thing is each one has to see that this is not an intellectual exercise this is something that they have to put themselves in within this and see how it moves them and take it on from there wow nice and i think we're all ready to start So once again, Anu, a very, very warm welcome to Sipping Thoughts. So excited to have you here with us. Okay. So in fact, the feminist part is the part where I'm going to start the story from. <laughs> so <clears throat> um, I have traveled a lot looking for answers, going to a lot of sadhus and Vedantins, and I have a lot of friends. I have Aghori sadhu friends. I have Vedantin friends. I have practitioners of tantra. all kinds of uh, practitioner of kabala you know various aspects of practitioners that i have gone and befriended and tried to learn from and i remember we were sitting with this aghori sadhu in our guest house in noida once and we were these women all of us clad in jeans and t-shirts and here was this man in this black attire <laughs> you know and with his um holding on to the skull staff of some sorts and <laughs> with his big tikka on his head it was quite it was quite nice the con- the contrast in the kind of people who were sitting there and having a talk and all of us there is there is a very gentle energy about around this man he looks fierce but there was a very gentle energy around him and we were all feeling very happy so obviously there is whatever practices he does whenever you come into his aura you feel relaxed and happy so <clears throat> discussions were happening and at one point i said baba one thing i don't understand is it okay if i keep lapsing into hindi from time to time is everybody here comfortable with hindi 
uh, Cindy, please do let us know and we will try to translate it in the chat box. But if it is okay, then that'll be great. Thank you all. So, so I, so we were sitting and I said, Baba, ek cheez samaj mein nahi aati hai. Ye saare vrat aur saare upvas aurte kyu rakhti hai admiyon ke liye? मतलब ऐसा उन्होंने कौन सा तीर मार लिया है कभी पति के लिए व्रत रख रहे हो उसकी लंबी उम्र के लिए कभी बेटे के लिए होई का व्रत रख रहे हो और पति के लिए करवा चौथ का और तीज का क्या है ये सब और आदमी लोग क्यों नहीं व्रत रखते हैं औरतों के लिए तो हिसे रखते हैं ना हिसे कहाँ रखते हैं कौन सा व्रत यानी नवरात्र और है क्या आई वॉज कम्प्लीटली टेक अर अबैर यू मीन नवरात्र आदमी लोगों के रखने के लिए हाँ सिर्फ किस तरह से किसके लिए रखते हैं कौन सी औरत के लिए रखते हैं बीवी के लिए रखते हैं सर नहीं 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 एंड दैट इज वेन यू एक्सप्लेन टू मी एंड दिस इज सो वेरी ब्यूटिफुल ओके सो आई एम गोन स्टार्ट सो द पहला नवरात्रि फर्स्ट लेट्स जस्ट ब्रीफली अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ नवरात्रि व्हाई इज दैट नव इंपॉर्टेंट व्हाई इज इट नव एंड व्हाई इज रात्रि इंपॉर्टेंट सो इन संस्कृत रा मीन्स रिलीफ and the thr- three mentions the tapatrai the three aspects from which we receive heat in our lives heat like the kind of discomfort tap na takleef hoti hai jisse to jab raat hoti hai to is takleef se hame chutkara milta hai ek solace milta hai right so because we turn inwards our gross body is at rest our subtle body is at rest our causal body is also attempting to be at rest and that is why when we get up when we wake up from sleep we are so relaxed and feeling so good because we have not been suffering the way we suffer through the day with mental anguish and physical problems and memory of past issues and all those things are not bothering if you have slept well the world has remained the same and yet you wake up refreshed so that ratri is a time for feeling better about yourself right so these are the navratri which are dedicated to feeling better about yourself and why nav is important because we have these three maha shaktis the maha kali the maha saraswati and the maha lakshmi i will share these details further but so and manifest life is comes from where trigun sattva rajas rajas and tamas so हर शक्ति का सात्विक रात्सिक तामसिक को अगर आप अटेंशन देंगे वंस ऑन वन डे दिस थ्री इंटू थ्री बिकम्स दीज नाइन डेज ऑफ कामिंग दीज एस्पेक्ट विद इन योर सेल्फ द महाकाली द महा सरस्वती एंड द महालक्ष्मी राइट सो दैट इज वाई नवरात्रि दैट इज हाउ द कॉन्सेप्ट इज वाई इज इट नॉट अष्टरात्रि वाई इज इट नॉट ग्यारह रात्रि इट इज नवरात्रि सो दिस इज हाउ बिकॉज वी आर ट्राइंग टू cover the entire gamut and bandwidth of emotions and energy archetypes right so this is it so the first navratra the first navratra is for dharti ma mother earth because if we have come in this manifest world if we have become human we have manifested on this earth we owe gratitude first to this mother earth that she nourishes us that she provides us an environment to feed this body this food body where does it receive food from where does it receive water from from mother earth so the first navratra is to honor her even if you're an orphan you're still here on this earth and you have to pay your reverence to her so the first navratra is dharti ma ke liye and look at how beautifully our ancients understood this concept they had the concept of khetri bijna you bring a part of earth and you put her in your puja grah that is how people do khetri bijte hain navratri mein jaw dalte hain aur usme se ghas wheat grass nikalta hai it is also got a scientific understanding because you know how fertile your soil is for an agrarian economy it is it was it used to be the kind of a uh, test you could do about whether your soil is fertile or not you will know whether your aapki fasal theek se ho payegi ki nahi ho payegi usme itne nutrients hain ki nahi hain right so look at the intelligence of the people who created these rituals so khetri bijna so you have honored mother earth the second navratra is to honor the dhai ma jo aapki delivery karati hain ab itna important hota hai that the person who is doing that has to be very intelligent because if you realize all of us who are into astrology or who who go 
to find out something about a future from an astrologer. We need to have a birth time pact because that is going to change all the predictions, right? Who tells about the birth time? The dhaima. Not only is she the one who's relieved the mother and helped her deliver a baby, what she communicates is going to be important for the rest of the person's life. Right? So the second Navratra is for the Dhaima. The third Navratra is for the Prasutima. The Prasutima is what you commonly call the Japa maids nowadays. Who are, when the baby is born, the mother and the baby used to be put separately so that and there used to be one maid provided to them, which was the prasuti ma. She was the mother, the child knew. malish kar rahi hai, utski ma ke liye khana le ke hai. We lost the plot sometime, somewhere, and we started saying, Are ham chua chhut ko nahi mante. What is this? Why is the mother and the child kept separately? It was quarantine for their protection. And I remember cesarean baby I had, and the doctor told me, six weeks, be very careful, Anu. This baby is very, very delicate. Six weeks, you have to be very careful. So what modern science says today that six weeks is the period when the child is most susceptible, most susceptible to infections, when the mother is most susceptible to infections. The ancient people had a system of keeping the mother and child separately with a dedicated person looking after the mother and child called the Prasutima or the Japa person. And this Prasutima could be the Bua in the family, could be the Masi in the family, could be the mother-in-law, could be the mother. It didn't matter. But this was... So the third Navratra is for the Prasutima. The fourth Navratra is for your own mother. So before the mother expects that the child should revere me and um, you know, be appreciative of my role in the child's life, the mother also has this magnanimity to know that before I have to be revered, all these people who made it possible for me to bring up this child, bring this child in the world and bring up this child, they also have a place before me. If you've seen Purani Zamane, when they go to the child, they say, no, 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 Right? So this, 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 was, this was the generation which taught reverence in such a um, selfless way, saying, you know, that you have, if you treat everybody well, you can be sure you will treat the parents well too. So this, the fourth one was for Apnima. Uske baad kaun sa rishta hai? Which is the next feminine relationship a child will know in his or, his or her life if the child has a sister already. Right? So paachwa hai for the sister. So dhartima, dhaima, prasutima, apnima, phir behen. Up Chhata Navratra. And we are talking. Anu, can you tell the five also in English? Because some people have just asked. Mother Earth, the nurse who does the delivery, the nurse or the maid who looks after the child and the newborn infant, then own mother, then sister. Right? After that, the next relationship you know. There are, these were times we're talking about when the mother and the daughter used to be having babies simultaneously. We all have some such relationships in our families that Masi ji and Didi ji are almost the same age, <laughs> right? So you may just already have a niece. You may be born and you may have a niece already. So the next is for the niece, Bhanji ke liye. After that, once the per a person has had all these relationships, then the role of the partner in the person's life comes. So the seventh Navratra is for the wife, for the partner. The eighth is for the daughter. And the ninth is for the granddaughter. So that is how basically all nine relationships with the feminine energy in the manifest world have been given the Utmost, utmost attention and due in the process of these nine Navratras. Yes, very unfortunate, you know, Amit Sharma, nothing for daughter-in-law, but hopefully the understanding is that you think of the daughter also as daughter-in-law also as a daughter. And hopefully you have raised the son so well that he will be fasting for her. Because Bahu ko beti manne ka ek Hey, uh, 
if you if you look at the ancient times jo family heirloom jo sabse precious jewelry hoti thi na wo beti ko nahi wo bahu ko dei jati thi kyunki khandan unse aage badhta hai right so this is how the nine relationships ab aap ye dekhiye if you have actually grown up being decent being appreciative and being sensitive to all these relationships in your life of mother sister niece the uh, healthcare workers the support workers of the earth itself you grow up into a sensitive person who will have sensitivity towards wife and eventually towards daughter and granddaughter as well and that is how beautiful i mean in a period when we have female infanticide to see that there is actually within the religion there is an understanding that you need to fast for them aapke ghar mein devi aa rahi hai aap unke liye vrat rakhenge and the beauty is that baki sab time pe to aap vrat rakhte hain right par aapke ghar mein agar choti bachchi hai aur aap usko celebrate karna cha rahe hain to aap usko kaise celebrate karenge aap uska favorite khana banayenge aap usko uske pasand ki cheeze denge you will give gifts to the person which are about uh, earlier times it was mainly shringar it was mainly mainly chundri di you know churiyani you gave a scarf you gave bangles right so in some people's households they had young daughters in some people's households they had young granddaughters so the kanjak ka rivaj jo hai you know where little girls are worshiped and unke unka favorite khana banaya jata hai you cook puri and halwa and chane right that is what that is celebrating the daughters and the granddaughters and a lot of people say oh in my family the rivaj is to do kanjak kanjak poojan on ashtami and some people no no my family we do it on navmi that is how that tradition happened in the family when the person the senior most person in the family who was fasting was fasting for the little girl in the family if the little girls were daughters then the ashtami poojan the poojan happened of kanjak happened on the ashtami so and if it were they were granddaughters because the gentleman is old and now he has granddaughters then it happened on the navmi so there is there is such a scientific understanding behind all this right so this is one aspect uh, there's so a question happened, uh, anu from ridu that is this these 9 days and when we're talking about the daughters because there are two navratris ones that happens in april and one in october november is this same for both of them in fact navratris are four in the year not just two anu there are two navratris which are called gupta navratris is the voice clear is there any problem hello okay fine thank you so navratris were actually there are four navratris so now let's understand this there is a reason why navratras are associated with fasting because every navratra to two navratras are gupt navratris those are more for the sadhaks people who are practitioners of tantra or sanyasis they are more for those but the navratris that we celebrate which is one which is not going to be coming now so there are uh the chaitra navratri and the sharad shardiya navratri right so one ends with a ram navmi and one ends with a dashera vijayadashmi the one we are now approaching are the ones that end with vijayadashmi and yes the concept is the same the relationship that you revere and therefore you fast that remains the same but this is just one aspect of it the more important aspect is what is really the period of navratri the season is going to change and therefore one has to get acclimatized to this new weather one has to get acclimatized to uh, diet changes one has to bring about changes in diet so that the body can deal with the vagaries of the weather that is going to be coming in now right so you have for example you have um, if you go for a detox what is it all about it's a reboot right that you go slow on the eating you take out certain foods from your diet and you focus on having light foods for a certain period of time and therefore you feel revitalized in the process and you come ready to face the world all over again people who go to jindal farms or they go to sokya 
what are, what are those places? You come back recharged, rejuvenated. So the process of fasting, you know, so this, this thing that you're eating to nourish the body and feel good and be, uh, and have strength, but you're staying off food for a period of time in a certain manner so that the body can reboot and stay healthy. How beautiful. So that is how we had Navratras. And we've had them four times for the serious sadhak and for sannyasis. Those were happening four times. They were going through these reboot processes four times in a year. So we know now also, no, there are people whose uh, occupation is all about being physically very fit and they go into training camps more number of times maybe than an ordinary person does go, right? So what is fasting? Fasting is not just about food. The reboot has to happen at every layer of one's being. The physical body is just one aspect of ourselves. There is the mental body. There is the emotional body, right? These also have to go through some processes. And therefore, we have this process of rituals. We have the process of garba. We have, you know, so some people need their, their energy to open up. Some people need to quieten down. So each person, when, when we were discussing in the beginning, what is it that we expect from the session, right? This is what I expect each person has to think about in their own lives. What is it that I need? If I need to reboot, do I need to just go off certain foods and have you know just the diet plan that needs to be altered? Or do I need to start including some physical exercise in my life and these nine days can be about gradually building up to a health regimen which includes a certain fitness um, exercise regimen as well or is it that I need to go into silence because mon bhi to ek vrat hai to become silent is also a vrat or is it that my mental energy needs to be channelized I am so busy all the time in this world working so hard, looking after family, these nine days, I need to nourish the uh, researcher in me. I need to nourish the inquirer in me who needs to have answers, which I have always well, you know, put at the back burner saying, I don't have time for this right now. So these nine days, I can use it this way, right? So even in the kind of, let's say, very simple thing, kuttu ka aata and singhade ka aata. We have two of these flowers that are available the most common which are used during the navratras so one is the one is the atta which increases the heat in the body which is kuttu ka atta, the buckwheat the singhare ka atta is which increases the coolness in the body so depending on which weather you're having your navratra fasts in whether it is the april wala or the october wala you will decide which atta to eat and depending on your own body constitution, are you a kapha person or are you a pitta person? So therefore, which one should you eat? So there is so much scientific understanding behind all this. Okay, there are some questions, just one point, Karva, Chaut. Uh, okay, but ma'am, unfortunately, respect and fasting for some of the other reasons. Yes, it is true. I mean, not just true about fasting, for a lot of other things. I mean, up. मंदिर में जाके लड्डू गोपाल को मक्खन खिलाते हैं और सड़क पे इतने सारे छोटे छोटे नन्हे नन्हे कृष्ण भूखे घूम रहे हैं और अगर उनके उनके लिए आपके मन में कंपैशन नहीं आया तो आपने क्या आराधना की क्या पूजा की व्हाट इज द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ फलाहार इन नवरात्रि या सो द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ फलाहार इज दिस दैट फल इज द लाइटेस्ट फूड टू ईट टू डाइजेस्ट बिकॉज़ इट गोस थ्रू योर डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम द फास्टेस्ट सो दैट इज व्हाई फलाहार Right, because when less energy is being used to digest the food, more is available to heal the body, to nurture it in other aspects. More is your, and if the food is light, the mind also does not feel so heavy. Uh, you'll notice that when you eat light food, you sleep better. So therefore, the mind is more rested. If you eat very spicy food, your so all of these aspects of our life are connected. So therefore, each person has to decide how they want to fast 
in the coming Navratras. I remember one particular time I was traveling a lot due to work and I could not have expected that wherever I go, I will get phalahar and I will get kuttu ke ata ki roti. It was not possible. I was traveling so much and it is not fair also that you go somewhere to somebody's house and you make life difficult for them saying, oh, no, no, I will eat this and I will, I will not eat this. It wasn't, it wasn't my understanding of fasting that you start troubling other people for your own needs. So what I did was I said, let me get, let me take away something from my diet, which I am kind of addicted to and use this period to cleanse my system of those toxins. And I gave up tea and coffee. This was about four and a half or five years back. And I haven't been drinking tea coffee since because by the time the eight days happened, I was so well, I'd gotten, my body had gotten rid of all the toxins with all the withdrawal symptoms got over. I don't need, no longer craved any tea or coffee. So one could use this period to get out of some addictions, right? Uh, yeah, so uh, Karva Chauth and Hoi and Chhat Puja Vrata are kept only by women. Navratras are kept by men and women. Yeah, so that, so that is true, but that is what we started with, right? So there are, there are fasts where men also fast for women. It does not mean women can't fast. Women can continue. The health benefits can accrue to both, no, if it is kept in the right, with the right understanding. And if you treat the period only as a period of festivity, even that is okay. If that is what you need, see, understand fasting and feasting. The one extreme of life is complete denial of all joys and being that is what takes you sometimes in a state of depression somewhere. The other extreme, so absolute restraint. And the other extreme is indulgence. To find the balance in between the two, the concept of fasting and feasting can be used. So one can sometimes need to fast and one could sometimes need to feast. And that's all right. It is unique to each person. Okay. Are there any questions so far? I mean, I have been trying to address them simultaneously. No, I think you have been. You've been bringing out a lot of the questions. Okay. So now this is this is one aspect. So food actually fasting is very the understanding of fasting in um, the Sanatan Dharma is like actually very very um, deep and um, also connected very well to the various facets of our being. For example, you see somebody who gets very angry, they are advised to do the Brahaspatvar Thursday ka fast. Now look at the understanding in this act because actually. There are so many elements at play, you know, uh, Sthan, Kal, Patra. For the same festival in the north, a certain dish is cooked. In the south, a different dish is cooked. It's because of the look, it's because what is locally available, you no? Know? And what, what the um, attitude of the people of that area is, because it is not just, it's just about, it's not just about individual, it's about the social dynamics of that area which will determine what you need to do so let's let's look at the thursday fast right the people who get very angry it would be found that somewhere in their um, astrological chart there would be some issues with the jupiter the jupiter is likely to be a tad weak and that is why, because jupiter is the planet which gives wisdom Anger is a sign of lack of wisdom. Na? Frustration is a sign of lack of wisdom. When you have to say that 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 you have to say So, what is the first day? 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 What is the first Somebody who gets very angry. What is that person? What disease is that person likely to be prone to? Hypertension. Right? What is the first thing doctors advise? If somebody has hypertension, reduce the salt intake. And what is the Thursday fast? No salt. So you can eat fruit through the day and the final, that one meal that you eat, it has to be without salt. So you can make um, gurwala chawal or you, you know, rice with jaggery in it, or you can make um, that besan ka chila without salt. Yeah. So, um, look at Ekadashi. Somebody had mentioned Ekadashi in between. And today is Ekadashi, incidentally. So, Miraj Vrat Ekadashi ka chal raha hai. And Ekadashi is what? Um, the fasting, ideally, I am not able to do it because my body is not able to take that kind of um, pressure. 
what body zaban is not able to actually the khane ki right let's be honest <laughs> so that fast begins a day in advance and it ends the next day so like the usual fast sub you start in the morning and you eat something by the evening this fast you start a day in advance you actually ideally should not be eating the dinner for the night before and you break the fast the next day and there are various there are there are some which are nirjala where you don't even drink water all day and and it's all built up over a period of time so look at look at the intelligence behind this right we have all heard of autophagy now that if 36 hours you can go without eating the body's healthy cells start devouring the unhealthy cells in the body and therefore the body heals in the process एंड एकादशी के लिए क्या कहते थे एकादशी के लिए कहते थे कि जीवन लंबा होता है नया जन्म होता है राइट सो हाउ ब्यूटिफुल नो सो दिस इज दिस इज द विजडम दिन द एंशियंट्स हैव हैड सो द प्रॉब्लम इज व्हाट नो वी डोंट वी डोंट काइंड ऑफ अंडरस्टैंड द इंटेंशन और द थॉट बिहाइंड अ पर्टिकुलर रिचुअल एंड जस्ट अडेप्ट टू इट नॉट नॉट अडेप्टेड बट आई जस्ट अडॉप्ट इट लाइक लिटरली So, मेरा व्रत है तो हल्दीराम की थाली खा लेंगे घर में मूंग की दाल चावल हल्का वाली खिचड़ी नहीं खाएंगे नहीं नहीं मेरा व्रत है तो हल्दीराम की थाली खाएंगे और थाली में क्या होगा वो कचौड़िया होंगी कुट्टू के आटे की फ्राइड वाली तो क्या डिटॉक्स हुआ राइट सो अगेन आई एम नॉट सेंग देर इज एनीथिंग रॉन्ग विद ईटिंग अ थाली ईच पर्सन हैज टू डिसाइड फॉर देम सेल्व सम पीपल मे नॉट नीड टू फास्ट दे मे नीड टू फीस्ट this may be the time that they find the joy and the energy that you know uh, which is otherwise missing in their lives and this is the only period they have access to being able to cook these things and enjoy it because otherwise so there are so many other issues uh, that they have to pay attention to that they don't have time to indulge themselves and this might just be the period they can do that and garba mein ja ke nach ke wo puri ek rajsik energy ko jo play chahiye wo milta hai wo us tarah ki wo kachori kha ke um you know that the happiness quotient goes up and that is how the person feels fortified to be able to handle the uh, monotony of the period ahead i remember at one point uh, standing in a uh, in a temple sai baba temple and sai baba aarti ho rahi thi and i i i was at that point uh, going through my uh, understand one you know one of those एक रूखा एस्पेक्ट नहीं आ जाता यू थिंक डिटैचमेंट होना चाहिए एंड इन चीजों से ऊपर उठना चाहिए एंड यू मस्ट अंडरस्टैंड जस्ट द मीनिंग बिहाइंड देम एंड यू कैन ऑफ गेट जजमेंटल अबाउट थिंग्स सो आई एम स्टैंडिंग इन द साई बाबा मंदिर एंड आई एम लुकिंग एट बाबा की मूर्ति विद दिस मुकुट ऑन टॉप एंड आई हैव ग्रेट लव फॉर साई बाबा आई आई मीन आई हैव फेल्ट ग्रेट सपोर्ट बाय हिम इन वेरियस एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ माय लाइफ एंड आई एम लाइक व्हाट इज दिस व्हाट आर यू सिटिंग इन अ सिंहासन एंड पीपल आर सिंगिंग एंड डांसिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ क्या कर रहे हो मतलब सीरियस वेदांत की बात करनी चाहिए ना ये क्या स्पिरिचुअल अपलिफ्टमेंट इन चीजों से क्या होगा यू नो द जजमेंट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ मी एम हैविंग दिस कॉन्वर्जेशन इन माई माइंड विद बाबा एंड दैट इज वेन दिस कॉन्वर्जेशन यू नो कम लाइक बाउंस इज बैक एट मी इन सेंग या यू कैन गो आउट विद योर फ्रेंड्स पबिंग एंड डांसिंग एंड एंजॉय योर सेल्फ इन द प्रोसेस एंड दैट इज दैट इज अ ब्रेक दैट इज दोज आर facilities you have access to in your life and it's it's absolutely fine you know you think it's an essential part of your life and you need to do that because you need to let your hair down but this woman whose mother in law allows her to go out of the house only when she goes to the temple and if she's singing and dancing in the temple aarti it bothers you where are you where where is the sense of entitlement coming from stop sitting and judging other people right so we each have to know कोई कोई मंदिर में शांत होने जाता है कोई मंदिर में भजन गाने जाता है कोई मदर कोई मंदिर में लोगों से मिलने जाता है और हु कैन जज व्हाट समबडी शुड और शुड नॉट डू ईच पर्सन हैज टू डिसाइड फॉर देम सेल्व व्हाट दे नीड सो दैट इज व्हाई आई सेड एट द बिगिनिंग ऑफ द सेशन वी ऑल नीड टू बी ऑथेंटिक अबाउट वेयर आर वी राइट नाउ एंड व्हाट इज इट दैट वी विश टू डू सो नाउ लेट्स द i'm telling you i am so awed by the uh, iconography that this that has been presented by you know by sanatan dharma for the various devi devtas and for the various um, the stories that have been given that 
um, so there is also one understanding which compares the navadurga their iconography and in the process explains the nine months development of a fetus the pregnancy yeah so let me just start just quickly take you through this so the first um, navadurga is does anybody remember here mujhe yaad hai main bhi aap se sawal pooch rahi hu कोई लिखेगा यहाँ ओके सो द फर्स्ट वन इज शैल पुत्री नो नो दैट वॉज द रिलेशनशिप द नेम्स ऑफ द नव दुर्गा द फर्स्ट वन इज शैल पुत्री सुकृति वर्मा सेट शैल पुत्री शैल पुत्री सो शैल पुत्री इज वॉट मदर ऑफ द डॉटर ऑफ द माउंटेन्स शैल सो डज एनीबडी रिमेंबर द डायग्रेम इन बायोलॉजी एज टू हाउ द यूट्रस लुक्स बिफोर द ओवम the the egg can be planted in it does anybody remember it has these villi kind because the epidermis is all uh, the it's lined no it's prepared to receive the sperm and to uh, start nurturing a fertilized egg right so shail putri then the second one is ma brahmacharini and women might remember when they've discovered that they're pregnant the first advice is given within the second month when they discover it is to celebrate because otherwise the pregnancy may not get stabilized so brahmacharini brahma jaisa brahmacharini wala aacharan karna hai brahmacharini the third navdurga chandra ghanta she has a crescent moon chandra ghanta that is how the fetus looks at that stage a crescent moon does anybody want to hazard guesses about the next ones now uske baad hai kushmanda kush is like little hair right that is what is happening with the fetus it's developing then skand mata skand skand this earth the earth element is actually becoming crystallized the rubbery um cartilage is becoming bone in the body skand mata after that yaad hai kisi ko is waqt main bhul gayi isliye puch rahi hu i think katyayini let me check yeah katyayini नहीं भूली थी कॉन्फिडेंस की कमी हो गई थी अपने जानने में <laughs> कात्यायनी या कात्यायनी इज बेसिकली वन द बेब द फीटस ओपन द आईज इन साइड दैट्स पीरियड द फीटस ओपन द आईज इन साइड सुंदर सुंदर बड़ी बड़ी आंखें कात्यायनी नेक्स्ट इज काल रात्रि दैट इज द पीरियड व्हिच इज द मोस्ट द सेवेंथ एथ मंथ दैट्स द पीरियड व्हेन इट इज द मोस्ट डाइसी दैट इज व्हेन Uh, pregnant women are told not to travel take it easy don't pressure yourself kal ratri because bahut um, the time is very sensitive right now kal ratri hai bahut khayal rakhna hota hai ultimate khayal rakhna hota hai is time pe the maximum uh, premature births happen at this time right so it's called kal ratri look at how beautifully they have warned people kal ratri hai ye उसके बाद है महागौरी बिफोर द बेबी इज गोइंग टू बी डिलीवर्ड यू रिमेंबर मदर स्टार्ट गेटिंग हैसल्ड आजकल हिलता नहीं है बच्चा आजकल मूवमेंट नहीं हो रही है ज्यादा यू समटाइम्स यू गो रशिंग टू द डॉक्टर बिकॉज द बेबी बिकम्स वेरी पीसफुल महागौरी नो द आइकोनोग्राफी दिस इज दिस फेयर कंप्लेक्शन वाइट कपड़े पहन के बहुत शांत है एकदम से महागौरी and then the ninth siddhi datri kya kehte hain ki siddhi do deti hai har cheez ki siddhi pradan karti hai stem cells what can stem cells do they can turn into any form they can turn take the form of any cell imagine our ancient people had this understanding in fact it is said that the reason ravan 
could not be killed was that he had the understanding of how to use his stem cells for healing himself did you know that which is why which is why ravan ki nabhi ke upar mara mara ravan you remember ravan the only way vibhishan informs everybody yeah regeneration thank you dr vandana saxena yeah so he had the ability to regenerate and that is why when ravan had to be killed he had to be killed by attacking his navel so that he could not use that technique anymore to revive and regenerate so siddhi datri this is the final so it's not just about so there are various things there is i, I remember reading and listening to this uh, so if you only think of yourself as a physical person and um, at the most a mind body for you know complex then you treat navratra period or any ritual in your life to affect only the body and the mind but if you look at yourself as more than that and then if you get into the domain of the pranic body so the physical body is the gross body the subtle body has the so this is the annamaya kosh then you have the pranamaya kosh and then you have the mano uh, manomaya kosh then you have the vigyanamaya kosh and then you have the anandamaya kosh so you have these different sheets of existence so if you look at just the pranamaya kosh so each um navratra can be attributed to paying attention to the chakras in the pranamaya kosh so for the first navratra you pay attention to your muladhara chakra and muladhara chakra also the element is earth and that is if you remember mother earth is the first uh, first navratra as well so each one can actually create I, i i remember at some point i think last navratras and the Navra, navratras before that i had created this emotional toolkit saying what can we do on every navratra in and treat it as that we have this nine step process as we go through the navratras to help ourselves at every level of our being at the physical level through the fasting at the mental level through you know people who are uh, practitioners of ashtang yoga navratra is the period of pratyahar you can withdraw your senses inwards stop being out going outwards be inward focused if you are into vedanta this is the time when you do more shravan manan right because then you do more satsang and you the overall energy of the environment is supporting us right now at the at any given point of time and that is why mantra jap is so effective so mantra itself is a sound it's a frequency and the environment because of the planetary positions and everything the environment is replete with that energy so the connection of your energy with that energy can happen better in this period if you actually decide to use it so you can you could you could create a ritual for yourself about listening to mantras every day or doing the jap yourself every day so on the first navratra pay attention to your muladhara chakra and just sit in silence for some time with your attention at the so muladhara is mool aadhar the first chakra which is at the base of the spine and since the earth element it is about the earth element you when you sit you feel that you're getting grounded that you you feel roots going from you into the earth and isn't that a beautiful way to connect to the earth and if you don't want to do khetri vijan that's all right you can create your own ritual of looking after mother earth you could plant a tree you could uh, you want to engage with the earth element you can you could join some pottery classes and you know engage with clay in a different manner and feel good about it so there are various ways one can do so second navratra now the energies move to the second chakra that is the swadhisthan chakra the element is water so you remember even uh, in traditionally in households for navratra the kalash the ghat sthapna happens a kalash with water and everything is established in the puja room right so you could find your own way of create a ritual of your own with that so i remember when i was creating these emotional toolkit for the first day i'd said the first day um, when you are honoring the earth element honor start with the sense of gratitude for all that we have because for what the earth gives us all we can have is gratitude nothing else and so there are two ways a 
you can try and do the things which will stop the misuse of resources so maybe stop using plastic stop doing the things which are um, stop cutting cutting trees and start planting saplings start doing something like that so the second day in your emotional kit now that you have expressed gratitude to the earth and you are on the swadhisthan chakra now this is the water element how do you keep the flow because water if it stagnates it stinks right how do you keep the flow one of the most beautiful ways of keeping the flow is to let go is to forgive so if you can on that day ask for forgiveness for all that you may have may have done which would have hurt somebody whether they realize it or not you ask for forgiveness and you forgive those who you think have hurt you whether they have felt bad about it or not you forgive them look at how it just clears up your energy there is so much more available otherwise without knowing we have these complaints and issues inside us and we hold our own energy back right so second day second second navratra yes sukriti you want to say something we have a time check so i'm just giving you a time check of 10 minutes so so that right now so that we okay. will go over a bit but yes so the second one is the swadhisthan chakra water element the third is the manipur chakra the fire element so i'm saying you could through this understanding of yourself of various layers of yourself find and create rituals that work for you and for this you could seek the help of a guru that you may have a mentor that you have your mother your masi your daughter it doesn't matter it's your journey and you each one knows in a, you know internally what they really need so there are various ways of going ahead but this time this period is very very powerful and if it can be used well it would do it would do one a whole lot of good because eventually it ends with vijay dashmi vijay to overcome those that vijay does not have to be somewhere external it could be within oneself and even if you heard of the mahishasur mardini the entire uh, people who may be doing durga saptashati and they would know about ke devi ne shumbhn shum ka vad kiya or mahishasur ka vad kiya right what are these when the kundalini energy rises within these are the faults in us that get eradicated from us let me read out so there is one madhu and kaitabha so one is craving and one is aversion so when the kundalini energy rises we become more equanimous hamara rag dvesh kam ho jata hai rakt beej you remember rakt beej ka rakt beej mein kya hai what is rakt beej basically when kundalini kundalini rises inside if you are going through meditation and you have this uh, surge of energy happening inside you there are a lot of people who would accept and admit that they lose a lot of their diseases because the rakt beej is destroyed the beej the asuric beej in the dna in the blood it could be cancer it could be some other problem people get healed from those things through these meditations and these processes they that is how powerful they can be so these are the things that the ancients were telling us so when they showed us that the devi is you know killing one buffalo headed rakshas a demon that buffalo headed demon is our laziness our inertia the tamas in us our depression and that is why mahishasur mardini the ones who who go the you go to the pandal where durga puja is happening and you have the statue of the mother killing that rakshas that rakshas is the the tamas inside us and that is why you have so many dances happening and sindur khela and so many programs happening because they are trying to uh, move the rajasic energy in you and make you uh, meet people get more social then the possibility of giving in to the mahishasur who could cause depression becomes lower so one can you see i can go on and on about the subject for a long time so like you're saying there's a time check if there are any particular questions people there, are there are so for the first question shivani we will request you to ask go ahead shivani shivani 
this Shivani Chan you're talking about? Yes, please go ahead. So, um, uh, Anu, you had mentioned that, you know, there are these different atas that you eat, different flowers, depending on your constitution. So, how do we get a list of which foods we should be eating in this Navratra? Because I thought it was a blanket list that you eat all these things. Yeah, so you, um, you could discuss it with an Ayurveda Charya, if you like. So, you could have somebody can do your Nadi Prashikshan and tell you uh, what a... <clears throat> what is your uh, constitutional makeup? Are you a kapha person or a pitta person or a vata person? But basically it is that if you think you have a good digestive fire inside you and um, or you have acidity and stuff, then you should go with the singhara atta because it is cool. But if you feel that the digestive fire in you is not sufficient, and especially now since winters are coming, it may be a better idea to go with kuttu because that is the one that increases the taasir garam hoti hai. Thank you. The next question we'll take from Namrata. Namrata, go ahead. Yeah, my question is on uh, Karva Chauth Vrat. And I feel that uh, shouldn't uh, the spirit of Karva Chauth really be retained rather than, you know, uh, rigidly looking at the rituals, fasting, even if you are a sugar patient? Uh, you know, I know of women who uh, end up taking painkillers for headaches and stuff like that. So uh, th that need to improvise and change according to your body type and times. What is your comment on that? I absolutely agree. Just, just geez, you know, uh, Sai Baba used to say, he never said, he never recommended too much fasting because it was about that time when people, you know, women used to get fall ill. He used to say, spiritual upliftment kaise hoga? Tumhara dimang lagega hi nahi un cheezo mein. Tumhare andar khatke dikar aare hai. Tumhare andar... <laughs> so yes, first, that's why it's important to understand the spirit of something, which is why, why I said like Navratras, like I explained, I like to keep the fast. See, honestly, for me, fasting is more about diet control. I love good food and it shows, right? So one of the ways I realize that there are times when you try and make an effort also, no, you go out with friends and say, Are kal se diet kar lena na, de. But if you tell them, Aaj mera vrat hai na, nobody forces you to eat. Right. Okay. I have one more observation. You know, what all uh, the discourse that you have uh, shared with us is uh, truly invaluable. And as a parent of two teenage kids, I feel that, uh, you know, Hinduism is always... Uh, sort of uh, branded as dogmatic, full of rigid uh, rituals, things which can't be done, Sanskrit shlokas which are unfathomable. But when you break it down to these kind of uh, simplistic notions, it becomes so much comprehensible. Now, there is nothing as in institutionalizing this knowledge, let's say, in the curriculum of our students. Because I think that, that is so essential to you know them appreciating, let's say, these days and uh, the essence behind it all. Have you, can, uh, can there be in some efforts at maybe making them part of the curriculum? Because, you know, frankly speaking, the history books that they read are redundant, they are biased, they are pretty prejudiced. And these kind of insights just don't come across. Yeah, so I think if, uh, if as parents, we first start understanding ourselves, for example, a friend of mine whose daughters did not like kanjak, right? They don't want to eat puri halwa. Those children want to have mango shake. They want to have a dessert. And the idea is to pamper them, right? And I've seen people from economically backward uh, areas, they would come and they would come and they would come and they would come and they you know, so we have to all be the change that we want to see in the world, right? So, Initially, many years back, I stopped giving chunri and um, churis to the children many, many years back. I started giving coloring books and pencils and uh, because at the time, maybe when they started, the way to pamper and support that person, that child's development was by giving her goodies like these. But today we give our children, boys and girls, equal opportunities in every field. So why will we just say ki ladkiyo ko tumne khali chudi aur shringar ka saman de na hai? Tum dimaag ka saman do na unko. So as parents, when we start bringing those changes, they look at us as dogmatic because we behave like that. Let us stop behaving in a dogmatic way. Let us say kanjak hai and let us actually start a scholarship for some child. 
हैव द हार्ट एंड हैव द वो दम होना चाहिए ना अपने में कि हाँ भाई मेरे में जिगर है मुझे नहीं करनी ऐसी वाली कंजक मैं स्कॉलरशिप शुरू करूंगी ईडब्ल्यू के बच्चों के लिए और जितना मैंने खर्चा यहाँ करना था मैं वहां कर दूंगी बट नहीं लोग डरते हैं अरे कंजक नहीं पूछेगी ऐसे कैसे होगा तेरा करवा तेरा कन, तेरा व्रत कैसे कंप्लीट होगा अरे क्यों नहीं होगा कंप्लीट भैया सो so, हमें खुद को अपने अंदर से देखना है ना वो सब Thank you for that. I know we're going to go a little bit over, but I know a lot of people are asking. We only got to the third one. They want the other six. <laughs> so I apologize to everybody, but yes, I think the demand is so much. So we are going to be extending our time today. So please bear with us because a lot of people are requesting this. I'm happy. And then Anita, I'm going to come to your question. Yeah. Yes. So the third was the Manipur chakra, which is the fire element, right? So you can somebody had asked, "Na ki diya kyu jalate hain?" तो अखंड ज्योत जलाते हैं सो बिकॉज वेन यू टेंडिंग टू फायर फायर इज एन एलिमेंट विच इज द वन एलिमेंट दैट यू के नॉट पोल्यूट आप पानी पोल्यूट कर सकते हो आप हवा पोल्यूट कर सकते हो आप धरती पोल्यूट कर सकते हो आप अग्नि को पोल्यूट नहीं कर सकते हो दैट इज हाउ पावरफुल एन एलिमेंट इट इज राइट सो नो आई आई कॉन्ट रिमेम्बर इमोशनल टूल किट में मैंने क्या कौन सा वाला यूज किया था बट इट आई एम श्योर इट वुड बी समथिंग टू डू विथ समथिंग दैट expresses that develops the humility in us because the manipur chakra is the center for power if you remember hanuman ji hanuman ji ko kehte hain kesari nandan right and hanuman ji yaag japte rehte hain har waqt ram 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 to manipur chakra ka jo beej mantra hai na wo ram hai aur uska rang hota hai wo kesari hota hai ये हमारे एंशंट्स ने हमारे एंसेस्टर्स ने कितनी सुंदर समझ हमें दी रामायण रामचरित मानस में है राम से बड़ा राम का नाम इट मींस दैट द राम कैरेक्टराइजेशन ऑफ कोर्स इट इज नारायण के अवतार बट राम का नाम इज इवन बिगर व्हाई बिकॉज द साउंड राम इज अ बीज मंत्र एंड इफ यू चैंट दैट बीज मंत्र यू विल एक्चुअली develop and strengthen your manipur chakra and the manipur chakra is the storehouse of energy if this is well developed if and if your nadis are uh, obstruction free then the prana can travel from the manipur chakra to any other chakra as and when required which is why ram se bada ram ka naam kaha jata hai this is the power of our mantras i know the lady earlier i forget your name sorry so she was saying mantra uchcharan actually is a very powerful thing because there is a scientific understanding behind it when the prana moves in the in the nadis in the pranic body that resonance that frequency creates a sound and that has been understood as the language sanskrit actually is an understanding of those sounds so when you talk when you use those sounds in certain combinations what you're doing is it's like a music program that you've written and you know you have a music sheet you press this note and you press this note and you press this note so that is what happens in your etheric body and when the etheric body gets balanced with the mantra jap the physical body also feels strengthened the mental body also gets strengthened so even if you don't know the meaning of the mantra just the jap is so powerful and dekhi baki cheeze whether it is pranayam or asan or meditation these things you still have to do yourself but mantra agar aap kisi ka sun bhi rahe hain na uska bhi asar aap pe hoga that's why it is one of the most powerful things so sanskrit as it is there is a resurgence in uh, people wanting to understand sanskrit so that's a beautiful development so now after the manipur chakra is the anahat chakra so we started with the element of earth at the muladhar element of water at the swadeshtan element of fire at the manipur now at the anahat chakra the element is air and this is this is the center for human love this is where now you you are creating connections dil se judte hain na maa se ye umbilical cord connection hai par jo dil ka connection hota hai wo zyada powerful hota hai na isliye krishna has been the jashoda nandan all his life देवकी ने दिया जन्म पर ही इज नोन एज जशोदा नंदन बिकॉज वो दिल का कनेक्शन फॉर्म हुआ वो मातृत्व का भाव था मतलब वो सबसे पावरफुल है सो एंड लुक एट दिस अडोप्टिव पेरेंट्स 
कि कितनी मान्यता है जीवन में हमारे कृष्ण के जीवन से हमें समझ में आता है राइट सो सो नाउ बेसिकली वॉट यू डन यू यू कुड ऑल्सो डू द जाप ऑफ दैट पर्टिक्युलर बीज मंत्र ऑन दैट डे सो ऑन द फर्स्ट डे डू द बीज मंत्र ऑफ द मूलाधार चक्र ऑन द सेकेंड नवरात्र ऑफ द स्वाधिष्ठान चक्र ऑन द थर्ड नवरात्र ऑफ द manipur chakra so each beej mantra you can find that out from somebody i since we have been running short of time i'm not going to go into each individual but aur kuch nahi bhi samajh aaye to sirf om ka jap kar lo usse powerful to koi aur jap hai bhi nahi waise bhi right in fact if you want we can end with the om jap today because ek thoda sa uh, experiential bhi ho jayega anyway, after that is the vishuddhi chakra that this is the center for creativity so this is the communication this is the chakra that cares of takes care of communication and uh, most of us who have thyroid at some point have suppressed our creativity have suppressed our voice which is why you have so much thyroid happening you know because if you if you do some creative pursuits and while it's been very unfortunate the pandemic one of the by products of it has been a lot of people have gone and pursued their creative interest now there are people who are painting people who are doing embroidery i saw people who are learning new skills where they are they as they express themselves their energy gets more and more balanced because the energy is coming to the higher chakra now and this the element is space and uh, after that is the agya chakra this is the chakra where so in tantra they actually they have more than one chakra here they they, they consider two more chakras here so which is तंत्र में तो यहाँ पे और चक्र आ जाते हैं बट इच पीपल एवरीबडी लुक्स डिफरेंटली इनफैक्ट डिपेंडिंग ऑन विच आप कौन सी विच एवर वे यू आर अप्रोचिंग इट फ्रॉम इवन द बीच मंत्र इज सम पीपल प्रोनाउंस इट विथ एज लंग समाउंस इट एज लंग समाउंस इट एज लाम सो इच वन विच ट्रेडिशन दे फॉलो दे हैव टू फिगर आउट दैट एंड इट्स नॉट इवन फेयर दैट आई शुड कम से ये सही है अब मुझे अनू बुलाते हैं Uh, there are there is a friend of mine who calls me ans that is the relationship she and i have that and i respond to that name for her so if she says ans i know it's if somebody calls me from behind ans i know who is calling me you know that's the relationship i have with her so depending on which tradition one follows aap kis tarah se pronounce karte hain aap kaun se chakron ko zyada attention pay karte hain ab aap ye look at it this way when you start learning medicine then you learn about the respiratory system as separately you learn about the digestive system as separately you learn about the cardiac system separately and there are experts but does that mean that the cardiac person does not know how the digestive system works he does so but each person's approach is different right so therefore there are various ways to approach it so we've done we've been through the chakra so now the energy has been rising up it has gone all the up, way up to agya chakra next is the sahasrar chakra which is our connection with the universal consciousness kundalini rise karke yahan tak le gaye bahut achhi baat hai but it is doesn't end there it has to be brought back down when it is brought back down is when it it has connected with the universal consciousness it has drawn upon it and now that energy that pranic energy it will uh, actually um uh, what is the word uh, you know it will uh, address each and every chakra wherever they had any deficit and it will fill that up with the kind of pran that it needs and then come all the way down and that is when you rest so to do this process to do within 8 days this process of your yeah, balance it thank you shilpi so balance and also you know uh, refill it because there may there may be some places where there is a deficiency so it will refill it so which is why this period it's important to fast not just from food but stay eat light even if you don't want to fast eat light use the resources that the world the universe has made available to you in terms of such supportive energies all around and help your own energy come to its complete splendor That's so nice. I know. I promised Anita. Please do ask your question, Anita, and then yeah. I will take the last words from Anu, and we will wrap up for today. Go ahead, Anita. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, it's it was very light, a nice session. I I want to ask Siddhi Tatri is how connected to navel. 
Siddhidatri, uh, actually like, it's connected to stem cells. Like how it de denotes, like you were saying it all denotes so when like the baby, this. When the, when the baby is delivered, no? Nowadays, if yeah. you realize, if you see, when, when you get pregnant, also you have these people approach you and they say, that stem cells ko save kar lo. Yes. Right? So, yes. And so, her cheese, if there is any disease later in life in the child, the stem cells can be used to address it. To cure it. Okay. okay. That is that is what it means. Kis, because Siddhi Datri ka matlab hai ki unke baare mein ye kaha jata hai ki wo har cheez ke kik pe kripa kar sakti hai aapki har bimari dur kar sakti hai. Okay. Yeah, now I understood. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Anu. That was amazingly enlightening. Any last words before we close for today? Uh, we can do an Om chant. That would be nice. Thank yeah. you. So everybody close their eyes and just, just observe yourself internally. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Thank you very much. With loads of gratitude, Anu, thank you for being on Sipping Thoughts. Thank you all for joining us today. And with that, we wish you all a very, very good night.